It is a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Statesboro, Georgia, and we have ourselves a packed house at Paulson Stadium. The 14th ranked BYU Cougars come to town and take on the Georgia Southern Eagles for the first time ever on ESPN+. Thank you for joining us alongside Amy Zimmer. I'm Danny Wall. BYU comes in with two weeks of preparation for Georgia Southern. They played 10 straight games before getting a bye week. Amy, how have the Cougars used that time to prepare for the Eagles? Working on basic fundamentals. BYU head coach Kalani Sataki told me practice has been all about body positioning, blocking, and ball security. He told me most teams tend to focus on plays and schemes. However, those can't happen unless the fundamentals work. They're coming in to face a Georgia Southern team coming off of a 38-30 win over Texas State last week. And it's also senior day for the Eagles. But the big question on offense is, who will be the starting quarterback for today's game? Moments ago, Georgia Southern announced true redshirt freshman quarterback Connor Sigelski will get his first career start under center. Sigelski did get reps in practice this week. The change under center comes after true freshman Cam Ransom suffered a sprained AC joint in his left throwing shoulder at Texas State last week. Also, Justin Tomlin inactive for today's game as well. For the Cougars, they have been highly efficient on offense in the air and on the ground. And running back Tyler Algier has had an incredible season so far. What can we expect from Algier today? Expect Algier to set the tone on offense for BYU. His 17 rushing touchdowns on this season tied for first in the nation for running backs. What you don't see on paper is his character. Sataki told me Algier doesn't care about the numbers. He's focused on the team and winning. It's the fourth time that BYU has played a game in the state of Georgia, but they have never been to Statesboro until today. Eagles and Cougars kick off next on ESPN+. the Sun Belt Conference on ESPN+. Plus. This game was officially listed as a sellout on Thursday. And look at the number of fans inside Paulson Stadium. <laughs> and Georgia Southern loves to talk about the power of Paulson. There you see the numbers 7-0 when there's over 23,000 people in attendance. Amy, how will the crowd play a, a factor throughout this game today? Georgia Southern interim head coach Kevin Whitley said the power of Paulson is real. Fans can be the extra player on the field to make a difference. And then this is the vision that Georgia Southern wants. They want to have on a consistent basis playing a top 25 team. And with a crowd like this, just look at it. Seas of blue everywhere, full of Georgia Southern and BYU fans. Cougars head coach Kalani Satake said that they have a tremendous fan base that will travel just about everywhere. And just looking at the shots here in Paulson, you can tell it's almost 50-50 with Eagles and Cougar fans here in attendance. Satake added his mother and father-in-law are making the trip from Florida to be able to attend this game that BYU fans travel and it's not just from the state of Utah these fans come from surrounding states to support the Cougars well the Eagles will get the ball to start today's game Jake Oldroyd set to kick for BYU the Cougars are the highest ranked team to ever come to Statesboro Georgia at 14th in the nation Caleb Hood deep to return for Georgia Southern the fans are ready. We are ready. Here we go in Statesboro. And Hood will call it off. And the Eagles will start at the 25. And we are going to see the redshirt freshman, Connor Sigelski, make his first career star. As you look at interim head coach Kevin Whitley, he said he's so excited to coach this game for the seniors on senior day. A ton of seniors that came back from last season using that extra year of eligibility. And look at BYU head coach Kalani Satake in his sixth season with the program. Was excited, enjoyed the hospitality that the team has received so far. Sigelski, first down and 10. Pass outside. It's Logan Wright who powers his way through and gets a first down and then some for the Eagles. This is the toughest defensive line Georgia Southern has faced this season. 
a huge statement by Wright jumping out and getting some good yardage. Logan Wright, one of the 17 seniors honored on senior day, redshirt senior from Jacksonville, Florida. Get the first down off of a 13-yard pass from Sigelski. And that's got to feel good for Sigelski, getting the nerves out early here to start in the first quarter. Quarterback Keith, that's Amari Jones in the backfield, runs towards the left side. Gets a gain of about five. How unique is it for the Eagles facing this BYU defense? Coming into this game, BYU's defense had 16 starters listed on defense. Their defense can do so many different things. It's going to be key for Georgia Southern to be able to try to find any open gaps they can to make a breakthrough. They use multiple fronts, whether it's a three-man front or a four-man front, depending on the opponent they play. Second down and five, Sigelski keeps, breaks a tackle. Down the left side, running out of bounds, and gets a first down for Georgia Southern. Sigelski showing some confidence early into this game. Whitley said this week, Sigelski, when he was taking those snaps in practice, he brought a lot of energy and looked quite comfortable under center. So two first downs already for Georgia Southern on the opening drive. Now on the BYU 49-yard line. Three running backs in the backfield with Sigelski. Handoff towards the right side. And a gain of a couple of yards. That is Jalen White on the carry. He came up big for Georgia Southern last week over Texas State. Watch right track. White try to break right and power his way through BYU's strong defensive line. Gain of seven for Jalen White, the sophomore from Daleville, Alabama. Got 82 rushing yards and two touchdowns in the win last week at Texas State. Another handoff to White. This time he has stopped. Modern game, really anything at all. Max Tooley there on the tackle. Great read by Tooley coming right off the line, was able to get his body in position and put up a brick wall. So it was a gain of only a yard for White. The Eagles are a dominant running team, third and two. Do you expect the Eagles to run here, Amy? It's what they're most comfortable doing. And when you have a redshirt freshman quarterback getting his first start under center, you have to imagine that they tried to stick with something they're comfortable with. On the BYU 41, Logan Wright powers his way through, gets the first down. Solid opening drive for the Eagles. Keep in mind, Sigelski has yet to appear in a game for Georgia Southern. He underwent surgery after suffering a shoulder injury this past spring. So this is a really big opportunity for Sigelski to come in and make a case for himself. And what a way to have your first ever career start against the 14th ranked team <laughs> in the nation. A true test. First and 10 at the 37. Man in motion is Chase Hancock. Logan Wright, and he will fall down. Kind of got stopped in the backfield, nowhere to go, and he gets a gain of two. BYU's line saw what was coming, and they completely closed in on Wright. The Eagles averaged 209 yards on the ground this season. BYU's defense only giving up 146 yards tonight. Four receivers set for Georgia Southern. Second and eight. Sigelski keeps. And he'll break a tackle and get a couple of yards. Maybe short about a yard. But that's a third rush for Sigelski in the opening drive. Sigelski once again putting the team on his back when he can't find an option. He steps on the gas. But watch BYU's Pepe Tanu Vasa step in for the quarterback sack. Gain of six for Sigelski. Third and two, five minutes have gone by in the first quarter. Nice.
Ninth play of the opening drive. Jalen White. Eagles get a first down. White thanking his blockers on that play. He was able to find a clear path up the gut just to find enough yards to advance the ball. Beautiful opening. Great blocking from Aaron Dowdell. Expect to see Jalen White a good bit throughout the day with J.D. King and Gerald Green out for Georgia Southern. Fresh set of downs. First and 10 at the BYU 22. They give it to White again, and that time taken down. Atunaisa Mahe on the stop. Mahe said, I don't think so. He saw that play right after Sigelski handed it off, and he made the big stop. White lucky to hang on to the ball there. Almost lost it coming down. Mahe, redshirt sophomore from West Jordan, Utah, 6'2", 307 pounds. A loss of one. Play clock at eight. Wright gets tripped up from behind. That's Uriah Leotoa on the tackle. No surprise, White's number is getting called almost every time in this drive. Georgia Southern offensive coordinator Doug Bruce said White coming off a huge performance at Texas State was not surprising. He's one of those players that has the power and strength to help Georgia Southern get down the field. Third and nine, Georgia Southern, 36% completion on third downs this season. One running back, next to Zagelski is right. Three receivers. Zagelski going to keep, takes the other way and gets tripped up. Once again, Leotoa on the tackle for loss, and that's going to be fourth down. Hesitation by Zagelski biting him on this play. Watch him break left, but then he sees the line start closing in, hesitates, and tries to cut back right. No way he was going to be able to get any farther. Had a block from Sean Pelkis in there, but nowhere to go. 38-yard field goal attempt for Alex Rayner. He was only one for four at Texas State last week. Gets it up, and it is good. So Georgia Southern points on the board to start. Caps off a 12-play drive with a field goal from 38 yards. BYU will get the ball when we come back after the break on ESPN+. Plus. Mascots having a fun time. That's Blooper from the Atlanta Braves making a bit to the Statesboro, Georgia. And Georgia Southern kicking off the day with a 13-play opening drive resulting in a 38-yard field goal. How about the opening drive from quarterback Connor Sigelski? Sigelski, in just his first career start in his offense, took seven minutes off the clock. Just one pass, trusted the run game, though. Blockers did their job, ran the ball three times for 13 yards. Britton Williams on the kick for Georgia Southern. Lopini Katoa gets taken down. Not much room to work. And we'll see for the first time BYU's offense led by quarterback Jaron Hall, redshirt sophomore from Spanish Fork, Utah. He had five touchdowns overall two weeks ago in the win over Idaho State, four in the air and one on the ground. What can we expect to see from Hall today? Hall has great decision making and just look at his presence. Standing at six foot one, 205 pounds, it makes him stand out. He has great command in the pocket and also stays very poised, barely puts the team in risk. First and 10 on the Cougars' own 16. Hall rolls out, throws, and it's caught for a first down. And that's Samson Nakua on the reception. A handful of Eagles broke through to the pocket. How about Hall staying poised, just like we talked about, still able to create a play under pressure? Expect to see Samson Nakua and others for the Cougars get more involved in the offense with the absence of Neil Pau. Pau was the leading receiver for the Cougars this year out with an injury. Here's the first handoff to Tyler Algier. 
And he gets about a gain of four. Watch Algier get the ball. Watch him stick his hand out. He knows how to use the blocks and to be able to try to create some type of opening even when it's really stuffed up there. He has a big offensive line to follow too. Everyone is over six foot four and over 300 pounds. <laughs> Shows how he's able to have over 1,100 yards rushing on the year. Second down, Hall finds Puka Makua. And he gets enough for a Cougars first down. Hall showcasing early. He has a lot of weapons he can utilize on offense. Puka Nakua, the younger brother of Samson. Such a unique family dynamic for this Cougars offense. They have three sets of brothers on the offensive side. First and 10 from the 40. Man in motion, play action. Plenty of time in the pocket, and he finds a man. Samson Nakua runs out to the 35, still on his feet, absorbs the hit as he's taken out at the Georgia Southern 26. BYU's blockers doing their job, allowing Hall all the time he needs to look down the field. How about that vision to Nakua, who's then able to also gain a few yards? Hall deep to throw, and it's incomplete. Comes out as Puka Nakua comes down. So an incompletion after a 25-yard reception to Samson Nakua. Watch Nakua one-on-one -on -one with Baker Jr. for the Eagles in the end zone. Had the ball but wasn't able to keep control of it. Great man coverage from Daryl Baker Jr., one of the 17 seniors honored today for Georgia Southern. Second down and 10. That's actually going to be placed at the Georgia Southern 35. And that's a reverse to Gunnar Romney, who breaks on the outside, still on his feet, and gets enough for a Cougars first down. Romney showing off speed in this play, takes the handoff, is able to utilize the blocking, and gets some more yards for his team. Turns out he's short, third and one, and it'll be fourth down after Romney can't hang on to the screen pass. So right at the very end of that second down play, Romney tried to get over with a yard short. So now it's fourth and one. And it looks like the Cougars are going to go for it here. They are 9 of for 14 on fourth downs this year. Algier the handoff. And Algier gets a first down for BYU. Algier the go-to player for BYU. He knows that he's able to create openings most running backs can't. Watch him just make sure that he uses his body to push his way through. Hurry up offense, Algier on the handoff again after the four yard gain on fourth and one. Hurry up offense once more for the Cougars. Second down and three. Algier gets through for another Cougars first down. BYU utilizing that hurry up, no huddle offense, trying to catch Georgia Southern on their heels as they're in the red zone. First and goal from the seven. Hall keeps and gets taken down at the four, actually sliding, diving inside. At this point, Georgia Southern is expecting Algier to get the handoff. That time Hall thinking, let's switch it up. Let me try to see if I can create an opening and get closer are long drives to start for both sides. Georgia Southern a 13 play drive and this will be the 12th play for the Cougars here on their opening drive. From the five, Hall, handoff, and touchdown BYU, Lopini Katoa. How about the power from Katoa when he got the handoff? 
He knew he was going to take it straight to the house and no one was going to stop him powering through. Goes right up the middle, spin move, and able to push his way into the end zone. Absorbs two tackles from Georgia Southern's defense. That's his second rushing touchdown on the year for Katoa. Extra point is up and good. BYU answers back with a 12-play opening drive. 7-3 Cougars, 3.15 to go on ESPN Plus in the first. BYU, the Cougars go 85 yards in 12 plays. Only take four minutes off the clock. How about the response from the Cougars? Paul, again, one of the most poised of quarterbacks in college football. He did such a great job of being able to use his field vision to get down the field and utilize seven players on offense. So we'll see how Georgia Southern answers back. This first quarter has blown by. Just 3.15 to go. <laughs> Here's the kick by Jake Oldroyd. And Hood will take a knee in the end zone. Eagles offense back on the field after the break on ESPN+. Plus. New Eagles head coach Clay Helton and his wife Angela Helton having a good time in this sellout crowd in Statesboro and Paulson Stadium. He has been everywhere throughout the last few weeks since being named the head coach for Georgia Southern. Helton very involved in the Georgia Southern community. And that was actually him sitting with his wife, Angela, as you mentioned. She's actually, she told me she's been commuting from L.A. and back because their kids are still in California. And what's fun about seeing Helton and his wife, Angela, standing there, they're actually serving as canning crew members today. Helton will take over in 2022 next season. Interim head coach Kevin Whitley will finish out this year. First and 10 from the BYU 25. Logan Wright on the carry. Gets a game of about five. How will the Eagles answer back after the BYU touchdown? Continue running the run game. However, BYU catching on to the fact that White is going to get the ball, and it's going to be easy for BYU to close in, so Georgia Southern has to start utilizing someone else. Gain of six for Wright, second and four. Wright on the handoff again. That time, tackled from behind by Pepe Tanuvasa. So far, so far, Georgia Southern playing very safe and comfortable football. Again, with Zagelski making his first career start under center. That's somewhat expected when taking on BYU, who's ranked number 14 in the nation. However, it is going to take some risky plays to be able to get past BYU's defense. Amari Jones back in at quarterback for the Eagles. Third down and two. Jones, actually right, who was smothered by three Cougars. And the Eagles will have to punt. Tanubasa among the three on the tackle for loss. BYU making it very clear they know Wright is getting the ball. You can see two Cougars taking him down. Along with Earl Tuyote Mariner on the stop. Anthony Beck set the punt for the Eagles. Hobbs Nyberg set the return. And Nyberg will call a fair catch on the Cougars 25. So now that the Cougars defense got a three and out, how will the offense be able to come back and execute? It's going to come down to Hall again, making sure that he's continuing his great decision making in the pocket and utilizing all of his weapons, which we saw on the first drive him successfully do. First and 10, Algier back with Hall. Play action. Deep throw from the middle. Caught. Puka Nakua still on his feet. Gets taken down at the Georgia Southern 32. 
So on first down, a deep pass from Hall to Puka Nakua. Hall showing off the arm. Then watch Nakua, once he catches the ball, he stays on his feet and marches his way for more yards. Ball we placed at the 33 instead, but a 42-yard pass from Hall. Four wow. of six in the opening quarter. BYU showcasing their 60-40 offense that Georgia Southern said they were prepared for. Play action again. Slant route by Gunnar Romney. Another first down for BYU. BYU just has so many weapons on offense. Hall is able to get it done through the air. And then also on the ground, there's so many running backs, especially in Algier, who knows how to get down the field. When it comes to stopping BYU, you just have to simply stay on your toes on defense and be prepared for everything. Defensively for Georgia Southern, they have had a couple of injuries to their secondary throughout the year. And the Cougars currently exposing that. Hand off to Algier. Algier, nowhere to go, breaks a few tackles, still on his feet, down the sideline, and gets taken out to five. How about the yards after the tackle <laughs> for, our, for Algier? Algier showcasing his strength and also his footwork. Look, three eagles on him, however, still can't bring him down. Algier just runs out of bounds. And that will end the first quarter. So it'll be first and goal for the Cougars in the second. 7-3, BYU on top on ESPN+. Plus. Back to start the second quarter. Hall on first down, finds Puka Nakua into the end zone. Touchdown! Right out the gate, Hall, a five-yard pass to Puka Makua, his fourth touchdown on the season. If Georgia Southern leaves a BYU receiver open, they're going to find the end zone. Watch this play. Hall finds the wide open on the far right side. Pinks it look easy. 17th passing touchdown on the year for Jaron Hall. Old Roy sets up the PAT, kick is good. It's 14 to three, BYU. Georgia Southern gets the ball back when we come back on ESPN Plus. BYU, Puka Makua on the five yard reception. And you look at these offensive threats for quarterback Jaron Hall in this Cougars offense. How big is that for Hall with so many options? You can't ask for a much better scenario for Hall when you have players like Algier and Akua and Romney, all huge weapons for this team. And not only are there weapons, but they make huge production for BYU. Kamani Satake, the head coach for the Cougars, has to be happy. Old run on the kick. Down to the 20. And that is Derwin Burgess Jr. on the kick return. So the Eagles back on offense. How do they respond after the previous drive for the Eagles going three and out? On the Eagles' last drive, it was clear that they were going to write this drive. They have to start utilizing other players on offense to get something going. It'll be first and ten from the Eagles, 28. Zagelski back at quarterback, Logan Wright to the right of him. Quick throw, Amari Jones has blockers, goes to the outside, gets a first down for Georgia Southern, taken out at the 41. Coming into this drive, BYU most likely expecting the run game from Sigelski. However, Sigelski opening right up with his arm, connecting with Amari Jones on the outside. Jones, a big weapon for Georgia Southern. Amari Jones, a man of many hats. He was the starting quarterback in the opener at Gardner-Webb, played some slot receiver, and now one of the starting wide receivers. First and 10 from the 40. Jones in motion. Handoff, White on the outside. 
Tackling at the 42, he gets pushed back. Ben Bywater, one of the tacklers for the Cougars there. Watch BYU's defensive line. They're not allowing any space for Wright to get through. Ammon Hanneman was the first man there for the Cougars. Sophomore from Highland, Utah. Only a gain of three for Jalen White. It's his fifth carry. Has 18 yards so far in the first half. This time Logan right on the handoff. Not much space as Tooley was there on the stop. BYU great at stopping the run game. However, when talking with Sataki, he said that one of their struggles is tackling in the open field. If Georgia Southern can get the pass game going, it might be an advantage. Tackling was one of the big things the Cougars worked on in their two weeks to prepare for the Eagles. Gain of one for Wright, third down and six, four receivers set. Sigelski, plenty of time, rolls out of the pocket, throw is complete, and that's Caleb Hood on the reception, and a first down for the Eagles. Caleb Hood gets involved, his first reception on the afternoon. Sigelski is showing great field vision, under pressure, still able to find Hood, and then watch Hood just pop out just in time to make the catch. He managed to get that one right into Hood. That's the third completion for Sigelski. He's three for three in the air with 40 yards. First and 10 from the BYU 41. Sigelski, pass, wide open, Logan Wright. Goes down to the 21, another Eagles first down. Georgia Southern making the adjustments they needed to on this drive. BYU caught on to the run game. Now Sigelski having the showcase. He can get the job done with his arm. After he plays the 22, but a gain of 19 for Logan Wright. He's another dual threat. Player down. And that was Uriah Leotoa. Sigelski taking a hard hit. And I think Leotoa may have gotten away with a, a late hit on Sigelski. Mm -hmm. So he is okay. He was able to get up on his own. Fresh set of downs for the Eagles. Sigelski. Screen pass to Wright. Wright has blockers. Powers his way through. Another solid gain. And he is, they'll say he got the first down. Sigelski finds Wright. Just a quick short pass, but that's all they needed. Wright then runs up and then check out Chase Hancock with the blocking to give Wright some extra moving room. Seven. First down for Georgia Southern in the first half. Now at the BYU 12. Sigelski now five for five in the air. Handoff, Jalen White. It's taken down to three. Just short of an Eagles first down. It'll be second down and one. The Eagles with an 81% red zone percentage. 22 for 27. You have to be thinking hand off the Logan right here. They'll give it to Wright, and Wright's in the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Sigelski finding right 
And then check out the blocking by Georgia Southern. Makes it easy for him to just find a clear lane into the end zone. The Eagles able to answer back after the touchdown from BYU. Alex Rayner on the extra point, and it's good. 14 to 10. BYU will get the ball back. 10-17 left to go in the second. Logan Wright capping off an eight-play, 72-yard drive for Georgia Southern. His seventh rushing touchdown on the year. How big is it for Wright to be a part of this offense for Georgia Southern leading the way, playing his final game in Paulson? Right, a veteran on this team. It's senior night. There's a lot of emotions that goes into this game, and then you have all the excitement surrounding you with this sold-out crowd. Wright doing everything he can to make sure he goes out right. Onside kick from Georgia Southern and the Eagles. No, wait. Ball still out and the Eagles have it. How about that from Georgia Southern with some trickery with an onside kick. The trickery not working on Georgia Southern this time. BYU thought they could catch Georgia Southern off, off guard. However, BYU not able to get there in time. Georgia Southern knew exactly what they were doing on this play, and they were able to succeed. If you want to make a statement against the 14th team in the nation, sometimes you have to go deep in the playbook. And how about that? Britton Williams, the true freshman from Richmond Hill on the onside kick, and the Eagles get it right back. It'll be first and 10 from the BYU 40. Williams not far from home from Richmond Hill, expecting a lot of his family members in the crowd today, an exciting moment. I believe the officials are going to review the onside kick, probably to see where the ball will be placed. Take another look here. That Mizell Williams first had a hand on it. Just the way the ball just goes all the way out. It was recovered by Chase Dial Watson, who came up big. I mean, just listen to this sellout crowd in Paulson. <laughs> Here's another angle. Just when you think Georgia Southern had it, the ball again comes loose. BYU falls on it. And then another roll, just in time for Georgia Southern to fall back on the ball. We haven't heard much from the officiating crew today. A clean first half so far. William Bonnet, our referee for today. When we talked to interim head coach Kevin Whitley, he mentioned that special teams was going to be a big focus in practice this week because in the previous two games, they had punts blocked for touchdowns, but also working on the kickoff team as well in practice. He said to expect major changes on special teams, and that's exactly what we just saw with Williams coming in and also making a huge play. After review, the kicking team player was out of bounds when he touched the ball. By rule, BYU will begin their possession at the 49-yard line. First down, game clock operator, please set the game clock to 10-12. Okay, 10 -12 so the they were looking lead. at where the ball was touched at initially. So here's Williams saying he was out of bounds when he touched it. His right foot, you saw there on the left side of your screen, was out. Kevin Whitley upset with the call, so instead, it's first and 10, BYU. 
from their own 49. Hall, handoff Algier. Algier met by Randy Wade Jr. for the tackle. Gain of, of four. Hurry up offense from the Cougars. Gunnar Romney gets the catch. Not enough for the first down. He'll be short by two yards. BYU head coach Kalani Satake said that he was excited to see Romney start getting going this season and excited for him to be back after injuring his knee twice this year. The bye week was perfect timing and this week in practice he's looked the fastest he's been all season. Third down and two. Hall keeps it and he's stopped by John Ferguson. And they're going to say he is short. Watch Ferguson able to position his body just in time and not allowing Hall any room to get through for the quarterback sack. Fourth down and two, the Cougars will go for it again. They have the fullback, Mason Wake, lined up in the I formation. It's a pitch to the right. Trickery from the Cougars. And Hall short on the pass was looking for Isaac Rex to tie it in. Georgia Southern's defense applying the pressure. Just how about Georgia Southern's defense? The special team's onside kick, you thought you had it, it doesn't go your way, it goes back and the defense makes a stop on fourth down and two. As a former college athlete, when a play doesn't go your way, it's best to just let your playing do the talking. Let those frustrations come out in your game play. It definitely came out for Georgia Southern there. First and 10 for the Eagles on their own 43. Zagelski. Keeps it. Has to get it out. He does and overthrows Logan Wright. But the big thing, Zagelski getting it out before Tooley got a sack. Tooley comes in, applies that pressure on Zagelski. Six foot two, 220 pounds. Yeah, you're going to feel that one. Zagelski has taken a couple of hits so far in the first half, but he's remained poised for the most part. So the previous play is going to be under review. They may be seeing there's a late hit on Thule there. This would be the second time Sigelski has been put in this situation. So they'll be looking for potential targeting. We saw the first time Sigelski got hit by Uriah Leatoa. That was almost questionable there. Let's see. Zagelski had the ball out before he got hit. Almost was too close to call. We'll see what referee William Bonnet has to say. Or Bowden, after, excuse me. After review, personal foul, targeting, defense, number 31, is in the crown of the helmet, 15 yard penalty. Automatic, first down. So, Tooley will be called Number 31 for, is disqualified. For targeting, he is done for the day.
tough blow for BYU, losing Thule. Again, BYU's defense is big. They're aggressive. They're going to play hard in this situation. It's just it's tough time, timing, but Thule does go in with his helmet. So a 15-yard penalty, first and 10 for the Eagles on the Cougars, 42. Zagowski will keep, breaks a tackle, and gets close to the 36. They may spot it at the 37. Then Bywater on the tackle. Maybe a gain of five for Sigelski. Eight minutes to go in the second quarter. Zagelski's run the ball a couple of times, four carries for 18 yards. Hand off Logan Wright. And Wright get the first down for the Eagles. Nice to see Wright all smiles when he gets back up after making this powerful run. His helmet even knocked off in the pile. Follow Khalil Crowder on the block. And Wright with his helmet going off, he has to sit out of play. Amari Jones back at quarterback. And Caleb Hood in the backfield next to him. Three receivers on the right side. Jones will keep. Jones! Gets through, still on his feet, and goes down at the 10. Strategic call by Georgia Southern, swapping out the quarterbacks real quick, puts Jones in. BYU not prepared, doesn't see him coming. Thought he handed the ball off. Jones able to find a clear lane. BYU knew they had to be careful going up against an option offense team. And head coach Kalani Satake said it was similar to when they faced Coastal Carolina last year on the road. And not only that, but it's also facing a team with a lot of motivation when you're playing in this kind of an atmosphere. And after all the adversity Georgia Southern has been through, you have to expect them to come out firing. Right in the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. Second touchdown for right today, and the Eagles have the lead. Amari Jones started as a quarterback for Georgia Southern this season because Tomlin was unavailable. Then he moved to running back, and now we see Jones come into this game and make a difference, difference real quick, handing the ball off to right and once again finding the end zone. So the ball was placed at the 11 on that first and 10 play for the Eagles. 11-yard touchdown run for Logan Wright. Already 10 carries for 37 yards and two touchdowns. Alex Rayner on the PAT. And it's 17 to 14, Georgia Southern. 625 left in the second on ESPN Plus. Georgia Southern, we talked about the power of Paulson here for this sellout crowd. Interim head coach Kevin Whitley said it's real. The crowd will play a factor. How has it played out so far for Georgia Southern, Amy? So far it's played out in Georgia Southern's favor. Georgia Southern thrives in atmospheres like this, and it shows in the record book when the stadium is over 23,500. Georgia Southern 7-0 all time, and look, you even have the Atlanta Braves mascot blooper in attendance tonight, the World Series champs. There you go, the World Series champions, Atlanta Braves. Got to add that as well. I, I was waiting for the big finish. Katoa will watch that one sail in the end zone, and the Cougars will take it at the Georgia Southern 25. So... Now the Cougars play from behind here again. What do the Cougars need to do here on this drive? Coach Satake said coming into this game, BYU does their best when they're playing loose and having fun. It is important for BYU not to get caught up in the scoreboard. Focus on themselves and again, go back to those basic fundamentals. Satake said they've been practicing all week. 
Single back formation for BYU. Hall, plenty of time, throws deep, and it is caught by Romney. All the way down to the 25. Hall with plenty of time once again. Then watch Romney, how he makes sure he positions himself perfectly to be able to come down with the ball. Hurry up offense for the Cougars. Hall rolling out to his right, throws out of bounds. Once again, Hall looking for Romney, the duo trying to make something happen for the Cougars. That was a 47 yard pass on the first play of the drive from Hall to Romney. Jaron Hall, eight for 12, 157 yards and a touchdown. BYU coming out fast in this drive. You can tell the team is fired up. Second and 10 from the Georgia Southern 28. Algier on the handoff. Breaks and tackles. Solid gain. It'll be third down. Gain of five for Algier. Just the seventh carry for Algier in the first half. 46 yards on the ground. Hall out of the gun. Puka Nakua. Nowhere to go. And taken down by Anthony Wilson. But a flag on the play and a player down for BYU. That's Puka Nakua. It looked like we just saw Nakua hold his right thigh. There is no foul for holding on the play. Fourth down, timeout for an injured player. So no foul. Here's Nakua on the run. You can see he sees Georgia Southern closing in. He hesitates. He tries to take a big step forward. And then he comes down. He really extended on his last step. Cool to get checked out by the trainers. Maybe fourth and four. Field goal unit comes out for BYU. 39 yard field goal for Jake Overwood to tie things up. Kick is good, and we're tied at 17 with under five to go in the first half on ESPN+. Plus. Georgia Southern and BYU tied at 17 and off the 39-yard field goal for the Cougars. Logan Wright has been carrying the offense for Georgia Southern so far. Two rushing touchdowns off of 37 yards on the ground. Just how big has he been for the Eagles so far tonight in the first half? The senior stepping up on, in this game, which is a very special game to him because he, he is a senior, and there's so much emotions, again, that goes into this game and all the excitement around it. Wright has stepped up and is using his power and strength to fight through for Southern. High kick from Old Roy, fielded at the 11 by Caleb Hood. And Hood taken down just above the 20. And with Logan Wright getting the majority of the carries along with Jalen White, picking up the, the pieces with a couple of running backs out for Georgia Southern today. And there you see J.D. King and Gerald Green inactive for today's game. 
next man up mentality for Georgia Southern. Interim head coach Kevin Whitley has preached that all week in practice. He is excited to see the youth also being able to step in in these roles and do well. He said they're not blinking when they go in and hear their name called. You mentioned youth, redshirt freshman Connor Sigelski back at quarterback, hand off to Wright. Be a small gain for Wright on first down. His 11th carry, the gain of three. Great production on offense for Georgia Southern, 177 yards total, 108 on the ground. And Sigelski so far, perfect five for five in the air with 69 yards. Second and seven. Right again. Goes into the pile. That'll be a brief gain of just one. She can make that two. So third down and five, Georgia Southern, three of five in third down so far in the half. Sigelski utilizing the run game, however, has been successful when going through the air. Pelkison in motion. Sigelski throws, finds Derwin Burgess Jr., and he doesn't have enough for the first down. Ben Bywater on the tackle. Derwin Burgess Jr. making the low catch, able to save the play and pick up a few yards. That's his first reception. That's a loss of two. So three minutes to go in the first half. Anthony Beck set the punt. Booming kick from Beck. Again, marked at the 30. And that's where the Cougars will take over on offense. 2.40 to go. You have to assume that the Cougars are going to go for their two-minute drill here, even though there's 2.40 left to try and get a score up before the half ends. This is where I could see... Cougars star running back Tyler Ajir come in and really make something happen for this team. There's a reason why he's tied for first in the nation when it comes to scoring touch, rushing touchdowns. And Algier is just one of those players that knows how to make something happen. If he can get the ball, BYU could find success. The Cougars have caught the Eagles off guard with some deep passes on first down. Let's see if they do that again. Play action. Hall, plenty of time, throws deep. Has a wide open man, and it is caught. Keanu Hill on the reception. Hall through the air in Hill, just making an incredible catch and able to still hang on to the ball after taking a hard hit. The Cougars offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick said they're not afraid to Go of a couple of deep plays through their offense. All the way down to the Georgia Southern 20. That was a 44-yard pass from Hall to Hill. Flag on the play. Ball start. Offense. Number 83. Five-yard penalty. First down. That will be on the tight end, Isaac Rex. Right on the far left of your screen, you saw a foot move. That's really the first penalty on the Cougars' offense that we've seen today. Something you don't see often from BYU with a little under two minutes left in this game. You can tell they're trying to make something happen. So first and 15, dump pass to Mason Wake. And Wake runs out of bounds to stop the clock at a minute 42. So they get the five yards that they lost in the penalty and then some. It's a gain of seven. 202 passing yards. 
make it 209 now for Jaron Hall in the first. 11 of 15. Second and eight, another flag. on the Cougars offense or on Georgia Southern's defense. And things starting to get a bit chippy out there on the field too. Ball start, offense, number 71, five yard penalty. So Second another down. false start, this time on the left tackle, Blake Freeland. Satake said coming into this game, one thing that the team needs to improve on is not chasing, not getting caught up in the clock and trying to play this perfect game. It's just all about staying clean and playing disciplined football. So second and 13, Hall has to get it out. He does, finds Algier. Algier tackled by C.J. Wright and Ben's Hosway. Hall getting rid of the ball just in time. So with a gain of two for Algier, third and 11 on the Eagles 21. Final minute of the play in the first half. Hall back to throw, goes deep to the end zone, incomplete. Was looking for Keanu Hill again. Hill is one player that we have seen for BYU constantly creeping near the end zone, waiting for that big pass. That time Hall, just too much on the pass. The Cougars will attempt a 38-yard field goal. Old Roy, he's already hit one so far in the half. Kick is good. Cougars lead 20 to 17. They'll cap off a five play drive for 43 yards. So you know you had to get points on the board and get a lead before the half comes to a close. Would have loved the touchdown there, but a field goal is better than nothing, Amy. Yeah, BYU doing what they can to utilize those few seconds now on the clock to get something on the board, to take the lead and go into the locker room ahead. And now in these final few seconds, it's just about playing clean football. Back-to-back -back Cougars drives that resulted in field goals. So they've had five drives so far in the first half. The first two resulted in touchdowns. The third with a turnover on downs. And the last two Field goals from Old Roy. They're both five play drives. So there is some time for Georgia Southern if they can try and get down the field to potentially even it up or take a lead. And both teams have all three of their timeouts left. That will bounce out. Some more chippiness on the field. Referees have to separate the Cougars and the Eagles. I mean, you have all the elements for an incredible football game in Statesboro. Pick out of bounds. 50 team. I rule the ball is placed in the 35 yard line. First down. So with the kick going out of bounds, the Eagles will have some extra yards. They'll take it from the 35. Amari Jones is going to come back out along with Sigelski. We haven't seen too many deep passes for Sigelski. Do you go for one here? With only this much time left on the clock, under 50 seconds, you have to. Four receivers in the Eagles offense. Sigelski will keep it. 
Nowhere to go. Gets back to the line of scrimmage at least. Interim head coach Kevin Whitley. Not going to call a timeout here. Well, now they will. Well, the injury timeout with the man down is Chase Hancock. So, even though there's an injury on the field, Georgia Southern did use a timeout. So they'll have two remaining with 27 seconds here in the half. Three receivers on the near side. Zagelski on second and ten. Throws to the left side and incomplete was intended for Amari Jones. D'Angelo Mandel was close to getting a pick. A risky play by Sigelski again with just such short amount of time on the clock now under 30 seconds. You want to try to move the ball down the field, but also you don't want to risk making a mistake and throwing an interception. They had Mandel and Jacob Robinson on that left side. Third and 10, got some movement on the line of scrimmage. False start, offense, number 72, five yard penalty. Be a false start on Khalil Crowder. In moments like this, you have to stay disciplined when you're trying to make something big happy, big happen with just a short amount of time. That was only the first penalty from Georgia Southern here in the half. So third and 15 from their own 30. Handoff Jalen White breaks a tackle, breaks a second, but was met in the back by Halls. Halls able to get off in time to help his teammates comes in for the big stop and man was he fired up after white got past hayes got past hanneman but could not get past the 6'2 315 pounder in halls BYU called a timeout with 14 seconds. Anthony Beck will be set the punt. Hobbs Nyberg set to receive for the Cougars. Gets it off in time. Deep punt. Fair catch from Nyberg. All the way back to the 25. Seven seconds to go. I'm not sure if BYU, well, if you're BYU, Amy, do you try to go for a home run play here or do you just take a knee and go into the locker room for three point lead? Take the knee, go into the locker room with the three point lead. Get your mind right to come out in this second half and be able to find a way to pull away in this game. Nyberg actually called a fair catch at the 26. There's four receivers out for the Cougars, and they've made a couple of deep throws. Yeah. 
That's what set him up for the field goal. So this may be the final play of the first half. Pass complete to Gunnar Romney. Romney still on his feet. He'll have nowhere to go, and that is going to end the first half. BYU goes into the locker room with a 20 to 17 lead over Georgia Southern on the Eagles senior night. When we come back after the break, we'll have a look at some of the Georgia Southern seniors reflecting on their time in Statesboro on ESPN+. Back on ESPN Plus, moments away from the second half between BYU and Georgia Southern. A look at some of the scores in the Sun Belt Conference because in the East Division, there is still a fight to win the East. Yeah, Coastal Carolina taking down Texas State 35 to 21. Halftime where Liberty and Louisiana are battling 21-7 at the half. And then also Arkansas State and Georgia State, the final for that one, Georgia State 28 to 20. How about Appalachian State, a 31-7 lead over Troy. They currently lead the East Division with one loss, but Coastal Carolina and Georgia State right behind them with two losses each. This might go down to the final week of the season next week, and Georgia Southern travels to Boone to take on Appalachian State. And when you end a season for Georgia Southern going up against your out-of-state rival, this is a game that you want to take advantage of to carry momentum into closing out the season strong after what's been a season full of adversity for Georgia Southern. And they might be able to go to Boone on a high note depending on how the rest of this game plays out. Second half is underway. BYU receiving. Katoa tackled by Eldrick Robinson. How about the true freshman continuing to be a driving force for the Eagles? Eldrick Robinson has been stealing the spotlight for the Eagles this season. He actually is coming off of a performance that earned him Defensive Player of the Week in the Sunbelt Conference. It was actually Bryce Christensen on the return for the Cougars. Both Christensen and Katoa wearing number four. But Robinson for Georgia Southern, you know, you mentioned next man up mentality. Robinson had to step in early in the season, and he's taken, taken advantage of every moment. BYU will start on the 17. Hall back to pass, plenty of time, lets it fly. And the flag on the play, that will probably be pass interference as Samson Nakua Wrapped up with Anthony Wilson. Too much contact by Wilson. Nakua was just waiting for the call. Pass interference. Defense, number 12. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Watch Nakua try to make something happen. However, impossible with how Wilson was just all over and, and with the arm as well. Yeah, for a brief moment, the arm's locked up between Wilson and Nakua. So 15-yard penalty will put BYU on their 32. Handoff. Algier on the carry. Gets a few yards. A gain of five. Do you think now in the second half that the Cougars will go to Algier more to establish the run game, or they will they stick more of deep passes? At this point, it's a why not mentality. You start trying to find something that's going to work for your offense to start really pulling away from Georgia Southern. Second down and five. Algier, eight carries for 50 yards. Hall keeps it, goes to the outside, makes a man miss. Gain of about three. He has a 39, so it's only a gain of two. Here's one thing to keep an eye out. BYU has not been effective on third downs yet in this game. 
Georgia Southern has been winning that third down battle, and that is crucial for BYU to start winning in that category. That's what helps you get down the field. Third and three, Hall dumps it out. Hill, space, down the sideline, and tackled by Wilson. And that is the first third down completion for the Cougars. Hill getting a nice look on the outside. Tiptoes the sideline. Hurry up offense by the Cougars. Quick throw is caught by Romney. And they will say that he is short of the first down. He's second and one. Gunnar Romney leading the charge in receiving yards. That was his fifth reception, has 87 yards on the night. Hall from under center. Hand off Algier, and Algier breaks through for a first down. Algier, sophomore running back for BYU. His story is incredible. Was a former linebacker, moved to running back in 2020, and now look at this season that he's having for BYU. Just a physical, dominating running back with great field vision. Cuts his way through traffic strategically. Can be a player that can really punish defenders. He was a running back in high school, and when he joined BYU, there was a need for players in the linebacker spot, and he was willing to move over. Here's the wide receiver sweep to Puka Nakua. Good to see Puka Nakua back in the game. Was banged up a little bit in the first half. Tackle from behind. Andrew Johnson Jr. Redshirt Jr. transferred from Oregon. It's a gain of three by Puka Nakua. Second and seven on the Eagles, 22. They go to Puka Nakua again. This time spins out down the sideline. And Puka Nakua gets another first down for the Cougars. What a play by Nakua. Does not give up on this run. He's able to break away from two tackles before finally taken down just right outside the end zone. Gain of 17 on the run. Player down for Georgia Southern, it's Darryl Baker Jr. The cornerback, redshirt senior from Hepsiba, Georgia. He came into this game a little bit banged up, but wanted to play this senior day game in front of this great crowd in Statesboro. A lot of emotions for these seniors that have been with this program and have seen so many changes over their time. When it's their opportunity to play on their senior night, they're going to do everything they can to stay in the game. A lot of those seniors that are playing in their final game were seniors that used their extra year of eligibility. And that's a testament to how the Georgia Southern program is ran. There you see the play where Baker got hurt. Puka Nakua just the beautiful spin move. And it seems like the crowd is 50-50 here. I mean, there's a, a ton of BYU fans we mentioned it earlier that made the trip to Statesboro. Well, BYU just had a solid chant going through the entire Paulson Stadium. First and goal from the five. Algier is short taken down at about the two, maybe have gotten to the one. He does, get, he does get to the one, so a four-yard game for Algier. The way that he's been able to avoid tackle, it will slip out of the attempted tackle by Randy Wade. 
Second and goal from the one. They go to Algier again. Touchdown, BYU. And that is his 18th rushing touchdown on the season. Paul to Algier. Muscles his way through. Even with Davis pulling on him, wasn't going to bring him down. BYU feeding off of their traveling fan base, who are all on their feet right now. It's a 10 play drive to start the second half. The extra point is good. It is 27 17. We'll see how the Eagles respond when we come back after the break. Algier caps off a 10-play, 78-yard drive for BYU. They are far away from home, 1,742 miles from campus, but the fans here in attendance make it feel like home for the Cougars. Coach Satake said fans travel, but also fans come from the surrounding states and the state within. And also, BYU's D'Angelo Mandel said, it's truly a special fan base. It makes away games, home games, it makes games more comfortable and enjoyable. You can imagine what it's gonna be like when the Cougars go to the Big 12. Here's Caleb Hood from the one, still on his feet, gets past the 20 and taken down at the 23. There are so many BYU fans just everywhere, scattered across the country where if they're anywhere remotely close to where they can see their team play, they'll make the trip out, even the mascots here too. BYU fans have plenty to cheer about when it comes to their athletics, women's soccer, into the NCAA Sweet 16, volleyball is nationally ranked, and then also their men's and women's basketball team off to 3-0 starts this season. So Georgia Southern back out on offense. First time in the second half, Stigelski. Screen pass to Amari Jones. Jones finds his blockers and will get to the 33. The call to play before it was stripped out, and it will be enough for an Eagles first down. As Jones makes this catch, watch when the play finishes. You can tell this game is getting physical and it's getting chippy. We've seen shades of that in the second quarter. I mean, you think about the back and forth we've seen throughout this game. Georgia Southern had a couple of three-point leads as well. Jones at quarterback. He'll keep, and he'll get taken down. Not much room to run. Tyler Batty on the tackle. Batty able to get off his block in time and finds Jones for the big sack. No gain. Second and 10. Jones still back at quarterback. Three receivers to the right side. Here's the run to Hood. And he gets a couple of yards. This time Jones with a quick hand off the hood. Tries to juke out BYU but gets trapped. Batty was almost there for the stop in the backfield. It'll be a gain of two. Third and eight. Sigelski back out at quarterback. How about the poise of Connor Sigelski making his first career start? Three receivers, man in motion is J.J. McAfee. Play clock winding down, Sigelski plenty of time in the pocket. Rolls out, flag on the play. Sigelski will keep and will get hit out of bounds. see what the flag will be. He's going back at the 28. Holding. 
Offense, number 56. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Left tackle, Brian Miller. Right there at the very end, you can't do that. The left side of your screen there. So it'll be fourth and five, three and out as Anthony Beck is out to punt. Excuse me, not a three and out, but nonetheless, fourth down. High punt from Beck. And Nyberg will call a fair catch at the 18 or 19. We'll be right back after the break on ESPN+. Plus. BYU leading 27 to 17. They're playing their first Sun Belt Conference team this season late in the year. They played three in the unique 2020 season. Some of those games were exciting to watch. Yeah, last uh, season, BYU took down Troy and Texas State before falling to Coastal Carolina 22 to 17. A last minute matchup for the Cougars and Coastal Carolina. Paul was looking for Algier on first down, had pressure. Incomplete pass. It was so unique how the Coastal Carolina game came into fruition that late in the season, early December. Yeah, in that situation, the season alone in 2020 was unique, and so teams were just trying to find other teams to play against. Made for an exciting finish in Conway, South Carolina last December. Second and ten. Hand off Algier. Algier falls to the 26. 12th carry for Algier tonight. Hurry up offense from the Cougars. It's a gain of seven for Algier. We saw on the previous drive how the Cougars made their first third down completion. Let's see if they can do it again. Play clock at 10. Gus, the mascot for Georgia Southern, trying to fire up fans. Hall will keep. Hall, get the first down and then some. Tackled at the end by Tyrell Davis. Take said when Hall calls his own number, he can be dangerous on his feet. Hurry up offense again. Hall, plenty of time, looking deep. And that is incomplete. He's looking for Gunnar Romney. Deontay Bimbry was there on the incompletion. Hall once again going deep. Bimbry able to position himself just enough to be able to make it an incomplete. He's one of the cornerbacks that stepped up after the numerous injuries from other Eagles cornerbacks. Derek Canteen was out in the beginning of the year. Najee Thompson, who moved from receiver to cornerback, out for the rest of the season as well. Seth Robertson out. Daryl Baker Jr. playing banged up. Justin Birdsong, who was initially a corner, moved to a safety, had to go back to corner. And maybe the late game, no, BYU call the timeout. Their first call timeout of the half and we'll take it with them here on ESPN Plus. Under six minutes to play in the third quarter. BYU 14th ranked in the nation, 14th in the college football playoff. Looking for a late surge here at the end of the year with Georgia Southern tonight and USC next weekend. BYU looking to finish strong to impress the college football playoff committee. One thing Satake said coming into this game, he's the wrong coach for style points. Algier tried to stay on his feet. Short game. We're stopped by Michael Edwards. He made first contact, only a one yard gain. <laughs> 
From their own 34, Hall has to get out of the pocket. Throws, incomplete. Good stop by the Eagles defense. Puka Nakua was the intended receiver. Watch Georgia Southern's Justin Birdsong able to get a good read on the play and they're just in time. This is the, I believe the first time that we have seen BYU punt tonight. It's the first time we're seeing Ryan Rico Booming punt from Rico. Hood has to go all the way back to the six. Didn't call a fair catch. And had to go back out to the six. Rico was ready. <laughs> First time out there on the field. Deep punt. Hood traveling with it. Once he makes the catch, he's thinking, where do we go from here? Well, he managed to get a yard, so it's placed at the Georgia Southern 7. So the Eagles have a long way to go. As Sigelski and company back out on offense. 190 total yards for the Eagles on offense tonight. Sigelski on the option, pitches out to Jones. Jones may have gotten a yard or two. And a flag on the play. Right at the very end of the play, too. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 18. Fifth penalty added to Necessary roughness from Caleb Hayes. Again, yeah, this game getting chippy and physical. Hayes all over. Yeah, at the very end, that push. So the Eagles get 15 yards and a fresh set of downs from the 23. Zagelski out to right, one hand to catch. Taken down by Bywater. Sigelski with the high pass. About the one handed grab there. Able to make something happen. Notice also how they're not throwing the ball deep with Sigelski. He's eight of nine with 73 yards. The majority of the passes that he's thrown have been screen passes to his running backs. You wonder if offensive coordinator Doug Roos will open the playbook a little bit more. And he does. Deep pass. Caught. Bo Johnson. And that's a first down for the Eagles. What a play by Sigelski in the pocket. Took his time. Showed as if he was almost going to call his own number and then stepped back and makes the pass. As a play, Georgia Southern has run a lot. That's resulted in touchdowns over the years. That's a 28-yard reception from Bo Johnson. First and 10 from the Eagles, 48. Johnson in motion. Zagelski back to pass again. Towards the near side. Is he in? And we'll say he is. J.J. McAfee that time on the catch. A big pass by Sigelski. And then look at the cat. Just able to keep his feet just inside. Close call. That's close. Oh. <laughs> Very close. And that might, that might be a cause to a oh. review. And they are going to look it over. It looked like for a moment the back foot of McAfee was out of bounds from the angle that we saw. His left foot appeared to be in, but his right foot may have been out. Watch again McAfee tiptoeing the sideline. 
after reviewing it, it looks out of bounds. So you see here, there's the right toe from McAfee. His left foot is clearly in there. The quick review. See what the referee, William Bonet, says. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. So it is a catch. Wow. More momentum for Georgia Southern and some deeper throws from Sigalski. Now 10 of 11, 118 yards in the air. The 17th first down for the Eagles. A little over three minutes to go in the third quarter. Hood and McAfee on the left side. Hand off to Jalen White. We haven't seen his number get called in a moment. And of about eight. Uriah Lantoa on the tackle. White was the go-to player at the beginning of this game for Georgia Southern. Sigalski doing a nice job of mixing it up now to free up White. Lamar Jones back in the quarterback. He has Wright and White in the backfield with him. Jones going to pass. And interception. Picked off by Jacob Robinson. Logan Wright did not see the ball, did not turn around at all. Amari Jones stepped back in the pocket. He knew who he was trying to find. However, Wright had, was not ready in time back completely to the ball. Huge play by Jacob Robinson. Second interception for Robinson on the year. And that stops the progress for Georgia Southern's offense. So BYU will take it at the 10. Hall will keep, has space, tackled by Anthony Wilson. He'll get the first down. There's plenty of space from Hall there and had the Eagles defense shook. It's a drive that BYU will try to capitalize on under two minutes to go in the third. Give it to Algier. Short game. The 14th carry for Algier. It's a gain of six. Now with 70 yards on the night. It's 15th carry. And he is stopped by multiple Eagles. Dylan Springer was in there. Randy Wade was in there. Springer and Algier buried at the bottom of that pile. Only a gain of two. And there's a flag. Springer jumped, but I'm not sure if the old line jumped first. We saw Springer move first there. Offside. Defense number 42 in the neutral zone at the snap, causing the offense to move. Five-yard penalty Wait. results really in the first down. Call. Yeah, not happy. You can see that early movement. Some of the Georgia Southern fans are happy with the call as well. First down for BYU on their own 33. Hall, plenty of time in the pocket. Deep throw, and almost intercepted by Anthony Wilson. Samson Nakua was the intended receiver. Well, 
Paul with the rocket. Nakua did his best to try to get around his defender. He even extended his arms out just trying to reach for it. Not able to make the catch. Good coverage from Wilson there. Nakua, Samson Nakua tried to go over Wilson. Second and ten. Play clock at eight. Hall almost tripped there. Algier stopped from behind. And Eldrick Robinson was there along with Parker Devine. Robinson, great job getting off quickly and being able to come in to make the stop. So it'll be third down and nine as the third quarter comes to a close. BYU 27-17 over Georgia Southern. Fourth quarter coming up after the break on ESPN+. Plus. What an incredible night in Statesboro. Both teams turning up during the time, during the break here. And just a perfect Saturday night. I mean, you're about to see a shot of the moon. I mean, look at that. That is, that is amazing. Beautiful. And you have to love seeing both teams getting in on just the excitement and seeing them get loose and have fun for what should be an exciting fourth quarter. Third down and nine. Pressure coming. Hall breaks out. Has time. Throws deep and incomplete. Was looking for Puka Nakua, but how about Hall being able to escape three Southern defenders in the back? Hall just showcasing how well he can perform under pressure. He said, hey, I'm still going for it. Just short. Really just to the outside. I mean, what a throw. So fourth down and nine, the Cougars will punt. Rico, another deep punt. Hood received at the 21. Rolls to the outside and gets taken down across the 30. Georgia Southern's not out of this game, only down by 10. What can they do to fight their way back? Utilize the energy in this stadium. However, not letting emotions get to them. Stay disciplined and stay under control of when they have possession. We spoke earlier about the power of Paulson and this sellout crowd. BYU, the highest ranked team to ever visit Statesboro. And face the Eagles. The previous highest ranked team was Coastal Carolina two weeks ago at 21. First and 10, Zagelski handoff to Jalen White. Zagelski to White. White trying to utilize those blockers to get as far as he can. Got a gain of five, tackled by Morgan Piper. On the option, pitch out to Hood, or excuse me, to Jones. Jones, a few words for Malik Moore as he gets a first down for the Eagles. A ton of fans still in attendance on this Eagles senior night. 18th first down for Georgia Southern. From their 41. Play action. Zagelski fires. And it's picked off. Jacob Robinson again. His second interception. A huge momentum shifter. BYU fans going crazy right now. What a read by Robinson. Sigelski with the risky throw. And Robinson climbing the ladder for that one. My goodness, it was a risky throw over to Jones anyway, covered by two men. With a way that how about, Robinson... How about the vertical? I'm saying. <laughs> my goodness. Wow. The first interception from Stigelski. 
the second overall. Watch Sigelski on this play, gets hit hard once again. Third time in this game. He's enduring it all in his first collegiate start. <laughs> He's facing the 14th team in the nation. Cougars back on offense. Hall throws, caught. Samson Nakua still on his feet, taken down at the 46. Oh, and now more chippiness, and there's the flag. This game has been physical. It's also been very emotional. It's senior day for the Eagles. Some seniors playing in their final game in Paulson Stadium. You know it's a first down for BYU, but we'll see how many yards are added. Kevin Whitley calling over Michael Edwards. And he was the one who kind of let this frustration get the best of him. He is a true freshman from Trustville, Alabama. He was another guy that stepped up in the linebacker After spot. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 12, defense number 45, their first of the game. Those penalties cancel, first down. So along with Michael Edwards, Puka Nakua. Oh, yeah. It started with Edwards, wow. and then Hook and Nakua came in. So those penalties will offset each other. Look, emotions are high. This is a close game. Georgia Southern's just 10 points away from tying it up with the number 14 team in the nation. And then meanwhile, you got BYU who's thinking, hey, we should be, you know, far ahead in this game. We want to be proving ourselves as we close out this season and get ready for a bowl. Hand off to Algier on first down. Follows his blockers and dives for a few extra yards. Looks like a gain of about seven. That should be a gain of six. Algier, his 17th carry. Second and four. Hill in motion. Handoff. Algier bounces to the outside. They have stretched for a gain of maybe two yards there. Algier doing his best to cut away. Or take it out of bounds. It'll be a gain of three. Third down and one. Do you keep beating Algier here? With Algier's statistics on this season, go to Algier. He can cause defenders to take bad angles because of how fast he is. They do go to Algier, and he gets the first down. to Algier again, points away. He's trying to power his way through. Not much room. First and 10 from the Georgia Southern 31. Algier will take a breather. Rapini Katoa will get the handoff. He scored the first touchdown for BYU in the opening quarter and get the gain of two. Also here with the Cougars running multiple running plays, they're just taking time off the clock here in the fourth. Hall throws deep and caught! Puka Nakua, touchdown BYU!
What a catch by Nakua in the end zone. Once again, one on one, making an incredible catch and somehow, some way, able to hang on to the ball. He may have let the motion get the best of him. Yeah. He has his second receiving touchdown on the night. He was fired up after. Probably in sportsmanlike conduct for sure. There is no foul on the play. Touchdown. Or not. Ref saying let him play. <laughs> Take a look again here. <laughs> Paul with the deep pass and again just barely able to position himself to be able to extend and make the catch. And then after, yeah, he's fired up. That puts Hall over 300 yards in the air for today. 312 to be exact. Extra point is good. 34-17 BYU with 10.38 to go in the fourth. More after the break on ESPN+. Plus. BYU leading 34-17 after 29-yard touchdown pass from Jaron Hall to Puka Nakua. What's the biggest thing you've seen from the quarterback play today, Amy? How both are able to handle pressure in the pocket and also not afraid to call their own number. But when you look at these numbers, Hall outshining with two touchdowns, Zagelski getting beat up on those risky plays, one interception. I mean, you've just seen so much time in the pocket from Jaron Hall and so many deep throws. He's not afraid to let it loose. For Zagelski making his first career start, he hasn't gone too deep on his passes. A lot of them have been screen passes, and he did have a couple of plays earlier before his interception where he went downfield. Hood will get tackled at about the 23 or 24. That's where the Eagles will start. So now down 17. They have yet to score. The Eagles have yet to score in the second half. They've had a couple of chances just resulting in some bad turnovers. You saw the first pick from Amari Jones where Logan Wright wasn't aware the ball was thrown. And then Zagelski throwing in double coverage. Both picked off by Jacob Robinson. We'll see how the Eagles respond. First and 10 from their 23. Logan Wright. Following his blockers, they have gotten a gain of two. After a one and three start to the season, when interim head coach Kevin Whitley took over, he said one of the struggles that Georgia Southern had was, you know, coming out strong in the second half, and they made those adjustments. They tried to. A but, light catch by, mm -hmm. by Wright, who gets taken down. It'll be third down for the Eagles. Second half struggles has been common for Georgia Southern. And they said that they made changes during their halftime routine to try to fix those things. And we saw success from that. However, in this game, Georgia Southern has yet to find an answer. You know, the great response that game you're talking about was October 2nd against Arkansas State. They did come out strong in the second half and won. It was the first game the interim head coach Kevin Whitley took over for the program. Third and five. Zagelski, handoff. Right. Gets enough for an Eagles first down. Logan Wright, his 14th carry on the night. Hurry up offense for Georgia Southern. Zagelski will keep nowhere to go. Mahe was right there waiting for him. Yeah, Mahe showed himself, and Sigelski knew there was no getting around him. Fell to the ground. A loss of two. Mahe will be credited for the tackle for loss. Darius Lewis in motion. 
Zagowski will keep again. Try to get those two yards back that he lost. BYU's defense just closing in on Sigelski. So Sigelski got the two yards back. Third down and ten. The Eagles may go deep for pass. Providing a spark. Sigelski. Out of the pocket. Throws. Incomplete. Was looking for Lewis on the far side, and it's fourth down. As Sigelski goes the other way, sees Lewis, and watch Lewis just extend his entire body out trying to make the catch, but comes up short. Anthony Beck, back to punt. Gets it off. Didn't go far. Bounces out of bounds. 7.45 to go in the fourth. BYU back on offense. We will return. So before we go to a break, there was a flag on the play. During the kick, holding, receiving team, number 46. A 10-yard penalty is enforced from the end of the kick. First down. So holding on BYU, it'll be 10 yards back when we come back on the SDM Plus. Back on ESPN Plus, we talked about some of the impact players for BYU prior to the game. Here's a look at how they produced so far tonight. Algier, Romney, and Nakua, all just reliable players, pushing nearly 100 yards. Algier with one touchdown, Nakua with two. Hall with a lot of options. Yeah, Jaron Hall, 311 passing yards, two touchdowns. Tyler Algier, 88 yards on the ground. They go to Algier again on first down. Algier breaking tackles. May have enough for a first down. Algier, just a fun player to watch. Watch him when he takes the ball. He just always likes to take defenders with him. He'll do everything he can to power through on a play. No, Mark Algier short by a yard. So it'll be second and inches there. Algier even lost a shoe on the play. <laughs> so he steps out. Katoa back in her running back. And Katoa will get a first down for BYU. Under seven minutes in regulation. That's the third carry for Lopini Katoa. One of them was for a touchdown back in the opening quarter. The Cougars with 473 yards of total offense. The Georgia Southern's 268. They go to Catella again. He is met by John Ferguson. It'll be a very minimal game. Great read by Ferguson for the stop. Redshirt Jr. from Manchester, Georgia. Katoa will get two yards. And Katoa will stay in again. He got seven carries for 24 yards two weeks ago against Idaho State. Play action. Hall. Will throw back to Nakoa. Katoa has space. First down and more. Absorbs the hit from Robinson. 
plenty of space on the far side and plenty of blockers to lead the way through. Yeah, watch Tokoa as Hall looks for him, able to make the catch and then utilizes his blockers. Black on the play there. And the blocking was all too well. Second down. Joe Tukuafu, the right guard, called for a block in the back. There's the reason why he had a lot of space on that yeah. far side. All the way back to the Georgia Southern 38. The second and 18. Algier back in at running back. Hill in motion. Algier breaks down the middle. Algier, shoestring tackle. And that will give Algier his fifth 100 yard game of the season. Algier, just when he gets the ball, he's off. And that may another, be the biggest run for, yeah. for Algier tonight. It's another great run by Algier. He knows how to produce. There you see 121 yards. That was a 24-yard run by Algier. First and 10. They go to Algier again. Another solid game. Overall, it's a well-productive night for the Cougars' offense. And a lot of it coming from Algier. There's so many different weapons. Looking to make a late-season push here to having a bye week. Four minutes remain. Play action. Hall ties time. Throws. Incomplete. Yeah, had two receivers down the left side and Puka Nakua and Isaac Rex. Looking more so for Rex there in his third and four. Hall was throwing more inside for Rex, however, overthrown. Also, that run, the last two runs by Algier, puts the Cougars total offense above 500 yards. <laughs> I'll address it. Elf in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> what a sign. <laughs> My goodness. How is he not cold? <laughs> He's an elf. God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just got that until now. Algier on third down. Seeing the be short. He got me there. I <laughs> Short by a yard. Fourth and one. And it seems like BYU is going to go for it. They're one for two on fourth down tonight. We're under three and a half minutes. Paul, handoff, Algier got the first down. Georgia Southern's defense trying to do everything they can to close in on Algier. Algier not making it easy. Now under three minutes, this is closing in the BA. BYU victory to potentially improve the nine and two on the season. From the Eagles, 27. Algier. On the handoff. At this point, the Cougars just running down the clock. Yeah, and this drive has been the Hall and Algier show. Algier now with 136 yards on the ground. Well-executed game 
for the Red Shirt sophomore, his fifth 100-yard game. It seems like the Cougars are getting in their victory formation. Cougars are going to burn a timeout. And we'll take a break here on ESPN Plus with 1.47 left to go. A ton of BYU fans still in the crowd that is shaping up to be a win for the Cougars. They lead 34-17 over Georgia Southern when you have fans traveling far and wide to watch the Cougars play they're not going to leave just yet absolutely not BYU fans sticking with their team until the very end and also you have to think about how this BYU team brings fans together they're coming from all over the country to cheer on BYU you meet new people reconnect with people you might not have seen for a long time it definitely looks like that upper deck has been rocking the entire night Absolutely, and it'll be interesting to see how many fans travel to Los Angeles next week for the season finale at USC. And for Georgia Southern, they competed this, the entire time, especially in the first half, and they'll need to carry this momentum the way they have challenged BYU to Boone, North Carolina next Saturday at Appalachian State. It is their rivalry game. You know the tension's going to be high. I mean, it's been a ton of chippiness and penalties back and forth and shoving and everything here against the Cougars. With all the adversity Georgia Southern has been hit with this season, these players could have thrown in the towel very early on in this season. However, the team once again showing fight in this game. One thing Cougars head coach Kalani Satake had to say was, well, it looks like more chippiness. It's still getting physical down there. The referee's trying to break it up. And more flags are getting thrown out. Justin Ellis caught up in the mix. There's a ton of more flags. You see C.J. Wright for Georgia Southern. Joe Tukuafu for BYU. Satake calling off his team. Kevin Whitley, interim head coach for Georgia Southern, just upset with some of his players on that interaction. Yeah, both head coaches never want to see that from their players. Yeah. And, and coming into this game, Satake made it very clear that BYU respects Georgia Southern and what the team has been through this season. He wants his team to have fun, but also respect the game, respect the opponent. Same for Georgia Southern. The way that the flags were being thrown out, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it results in a, some injections here, potentially. We'll, we'll see. But at, at this point, with BYU just trying to kneel it out, I mean, the game's over at that point. You know, not sure who started it or, or whatever, but, you know, some of you just don't want to see late in the game when – a 17 point lead for BYU here. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 42 and number two, their first of the game. Both penalties are enforced. First down. So it's the first unsportsmanlike penalty for both Dylan Springer and Justin Ellis. Oh, yeah. There you see the push by Ellis knocking off the helmet of Tukuafu. That was the first. And there you see Springer getting involved towards the left side of your screen at the end. So that's going to move BYU all the way out to the seven. That makes the six. Cougar is still going to kneel it out. So this win will improve the Cougars to 9-2 on the year. Georgia Southern will drop to 3-8. A challenging back and forth and a fun first half between these two teams. And then BYU outscoring Georgia Southern 14-0 in the second half.
Yeah, a very competitive first half. Both teams going back and forth. Georgia Southern showing fight, and BYU finally able to find their rhythm in the second half. It's not the outcome that these Georgia Southern seniors wanted playing their final game in Paulson Stadium, but you have to appreciate the, the fight that they had and the grit that they had to push their way through and play this game and push the Cougars to the limit. Yeah, it got physical and multiple times throughout the night and something you didn't want to see there at the end with the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, but nothing but love between Kalani Satake and Kevin Whitley there at the end. Yeah, Georgia Southern entered this game with a laundry list of injuries and put up a fight with next man up mentality in redshirt freshman Connor Sigalski. However, BYU ranked number 14 in the nation. A huge group of defense. I mean, this team is going to do big things. Final score, BYU, George, the 34 to Georgia Southern, 17. We'll wrap things up after the break on ESPN+. Plus. BYU embracing the fans that traveled far and wide to see them beat Georgia Southern 34 to 17 in Paulson Stadium on ESPN Plus, and they put up 510 yards of total offense, but a lot of fight from Georgia Southern. A look at the final game summary, Amy. What's one thing that sticks out to you? Well, you have to tip your hat off to Georgia Southern with Sigalski coming in, getting his first start under center, 11 for 14, 122 yards, 79% completion rate. A lot of pressure was on him taking on the number 14 team in the nation. However, BYU just lights off, lights out on offense and defense. Again, led by Jaron Hall, the signal caller, just so poised and has so many different weapons he can go to. BYU just being able to pull out with the win, 34-17. The Cougars will go on the road again, this time to Los Angeles, California, to take on Southern California. Georgia Southern will go to Boone, North Carolina, to take on Appalachian State to finish up the year. So, for Amy Zimmer, our producer, Kevin Pazernick, our technical director, Sean Williams, Jensen Bland and Braden Holder on graphics, Jared Dank, our replay man, and Joshua Roll in our audio, and the rest of our entire ESPN Plus crew, I'm saying, I'm Danny Wall saying so long from Paulson Stadium. Final score, BYU 34, Georgia Southern 17. All games airing on the ESPN Network, are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>